Hiya, um, welcome to week five. Uh, so we're going to kind of keep going um, on the topic of last week uh, in the sense that we're going to look at the vector product or the cross product and we're going to see what uses it has um, in everything we've kind of been studying. Um, so one of the first things um, is that if we look at the length axiom, um, then the length of the vector of the, of the vector product of two perpendicular vectors, this is going to give us the area of a rectangle bordered by the by those two um, vectors. So in other words, what we can kind of see is if I have two perpendicular vectors, then the vector product is going to give us this area, area, right? Um, and in essence, this is encapsulated in the following proposition. So the proposition uh, states 1.87, um, it's exactly saying this. So it's saying the area of a parallelogram. So a parallelogram, if you don't remember, um, this is just going to be some shape that looks kind of like this, um, which is why we will note um, this as its image. Uh, image, oh my God, that's a bad choice of words. Words are not working. Um, so it's a parallelogram formed by two vectors. Um, so here you can kind of see this is my x vector, this is my, or here I guess we're using v and w, v vector underneath, uh, and then my w vector here. Um, and so the area of the parallelogram is just given by the length of the vector product of these two. Um, and here, notice how we're not necessarily saying that the, area, that the two vectors have to be perpendicular. Um, so this is this is a kind of nice thing in that we don't have to worry about the perpendicularity, um, just the vector product, the length of the vector product, right, um, gives us the area. So let's actually, so um, we can write this down. Uh, so the area, so this proposition is saying the area of any two vectors, x and y, not that, y, um, this is just equal to the length of x vector cross product y. So let's look at this, um, a little proof. Um, and what we're going to first do is we're going to break um, x and y into two different components. So we're going to look at um, y here first, and we're going to look at y and we're going to compose it into two, di or two different things. So in essence, what we're gonna have here is, so say I have my x here, um, and I have my y here, for example. We're gonna break this y down into a part that is parallel to x and a part that's perpendicular to x. So the part that's parallel, so if this is um, y here, um, then y perpendicular will be this vector here, and y parallel will be kind of this vector here. This is kind of the idea to kind of see like, oh, the parallel one is really just parallel with x. Um, so another way to say this is y is orthogonal to x. Um, yeah. So the area um, is equal to the product of the length of the vectors, right? So in other words, what we have, um, yeah, so like this, the area part is okay. So on the other hand, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this cross product, so x times y. Now the y we can decompose into two parts, right? So we have this x times y, we can decompose y into the two parts. Um, and then here, since we can distribute with a cross product, we distribute and we're left with this. Now here, since these two are parallel, this just goes to zero. Um, you can kind of see this, um, and I think we talked about it last time. Uh, so if, since they're collinear, we just get zero. Um, and what this means is this lighter, latter half here, we can kind of get rid of. So this goes away. And we're left with that x times y is equal to x um, cross product of the y um, perpendicular. And so we're left with um, x times y uh, because the two are perpendicular. Um, and there you go. So in other words, when we look at y, this is just like we can just kind of ignore. Um, yeah, so nice and easy, nice and fun. Um, but it's very important to understand the meaning 
um, of the vector product, like what it's coming. So in other words, the vector product of two vectors, this is just going to be orthogonal to the plane spanned by these two vectors. So this might seem weird because here we're saying, oh, well, this is where this, the length of this is giving us the area, right? So here we have a vector whose length, the length of the vector is going to be the area spanned by these two vectors. Um, and it turns out that the vector product itself is also going to be orthogonal to the plane. And we'll see this in a minute. Um, and so the direction of the div vector is going to be defined by the orientation. So let's kind of look into this um, and see where this is going into um, and stuff like this. Um, I forgot to move something. Where did it go? I need to move this so I know where. Okay. Um, so yeah, so first we're going to recall ourselves what the area of a parallelogram is. So the area of a parallelogram, this is just given by, um, so here if we have the area, right? So this remember is just the area, the parallelogram area of parallelogram. And this is just equal to the length of the sides times sine of theta. This is something you learned back in the day. Don't worry about it if you're not remembering. But what we want to do is we want to compare this to the inner product. If you notice, the inner product and the area of the parallelogram are very similar to one another. The main difference is here is that here we kind of have a sine, here we have a cosine. Um, and this actually shows the fundamental difference between these two products. So the first one is that the inner product gives us a zero. Like when was the inner product zero? This is precisely when they're orthogonal to one another or perpendicular in R spaces. So orthogonal. Um, and for a vector product, this is zero precisely when they're collinear. Um, in other words, they lie on the same line and or they're parallel to one another. They're going to be collinear, right? Um, so here, kind of like this example here, when we had this, this line is parallel, but because they're vectors, there's no really location of the vector, right? So like this y um, double prime, I could have put in the bottom and it doesn't really, like it won't really change. Um, I guess in some sense, we want to consider them all coming from the same kind of spot. Um, but that's a talk for another day. Um, or maybe later. Uh, so anyway, um, side note, um, we can actually derive this formula using this formula. Um, and we're going to do that. So if we look at the identity, so if we look at these two and we try to add them together, um, this is just going to, so, so we haven't proved this yet, um, that this equality, we haven't proved this equality yet. We'll do that in a minute. So we'll keep this as a question mark. So if this is equal to x squared times y squared, well, here I can just decompose this into, so here there's like a secret one hiding. So one is just sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Um, and then here you can kind of push these to the side, right? So um, pushing the sine squared on the left and then the x plus y squared on the right. Um, because this, if you kind of see this, right, this is x squared, y squared, cosine squared theta, which is precisely what um, this distribution in the bottom gives us, right? So then this, then we can kind of cancel these two here. Um, we can cancel this guy, this guy, and you can kind of see that we're left with x cross y squared is equal to x squared y squared sine squared theta, which is why we have like the absolute values for the sine theta, because we don't necessarily know what the sine of sine theta is. So let's let's go ahead and prove let's go see this equality since we're like oh these are equal to one another so lemma 1.88 um we're going to see that the following identity so we're going to see that v times w squared plus uh, inner product v w squared is equal to v squared w 
squared. And that's what we said we need to show in order for this whole thing to work. Um, so we only have to kind of look at this in particular. So let's, let's break this down. So first, we're going to start off with some orthonormal basis. Uh, so we're going to fix some orthonormal basis um, here, B. So B is orthonormal. Ooh, why is this so big? Oh, I went to the wrong one. Anyway. Um, and here we're going to look at these two vectors in this, in this uh, basis. So we're going to look at these matrices um, with regards to this basis. And then if I um, look at this determinant, so I'm going to look at the determinant formula. So I'm going to do basically, oop, we're going to do this product in complete um, generality. So this we saw, I think, last time um, where we kind of went over um, how to do the vector product um, and that this was basically, so if you kind of remember, we had V cross W is equal to the determinant, right, determinant, determinant of E1 to 3, if you kind of remember this, E1, V2, 3, W1, W2, 3. So this equality, then if we take the length squared, blah, 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 gives us this determinant equality here on the right. Um, and so what we can then do is we basically solve these determinants. So we plug them out. So this, we just solve the determinants. We're left with this. And we're left with this kind of fun little formula here at the end. So we're left with this formula here. So that gives us one of the three components. So we solve this part here. Let's look at the second one, the, the inner product of V and W. Um, this one is, so this is just the normal inner product, right? Because it's an orthonormal basis. So it's just the dot product. We handle these out. We put everything out together. Um, and then we're left with, so we have this formula. And then finally on the right hand side, all that's left. Um, so this is done. All that's left is here. So this, we just, again, do the same thing, inner product. So here you're inner producting with itself or you're doing the length function, so the dot product. And we're left with this. And then what we're going to notice is if I want to add these things, I have a red part, a green part, a blue part, and a green part. If you can't really see, we'll kind of... Um, highlight them. So this is one part. And then this is the same part in the other side. So these are equal on the other sides. Um, and then the green part here, if you notice everything here is minus, so this is like minus two, and here we have plus two. So these are going to cancel when we add these two things together. And then all that's left is this blue part here, the third part, and we see it's the same on this side here. So in other words, what we can kind of see is if you kind of remember here, we had one and one, we had minus two and two, and then we had three and three. Um, so this is kind of how, um, so this is, these are the parts, parts, not actual numbers. Um, okay. We're going to stop here. This video is exceedingly long. Um, so yeah, um, I guess all we did really today is show that this thing is true um, and that the area is equal to that. Um, so I will see you in the next video um, where we talk about how area and determinant are related to one another because we kind of saw here that we used the determinant to solve this. Um, so I will see you in the next video. Peace.